At this time, I'd like to introduce our presenters, Jack Ogden and Jackie Lorenzi, Marketing Managers for System Sensor. Jack and Jackie, take it away. Thanks, Ross. I, you know, I've really been looking forward to doing this webinar because we had so many questions when we were out in California at the First Alert Professionals Convention in, in November. So um, first, let's start off with a summary of the topics that we're going to cover today. We'll go over the basics of carbon monoxide, what it is, why it's dangerous, how it affects humans. We'll cover current legislation and tell you how you can benefit from selling system-connected CO detection. We'll talk about where CO detectors should be installed. And I know this is definitely a recurring question that we've been getting from the first alert professional dealers throughout the country, certainly over the past year. Um, and then we'll provide an overview of System Sensor's hardwired CO detector, the CO1224T with real test as well as Honeywell Security's wireless carbon monoxide detector, the 5800CO. And, and then we'll have some time, as, as Ross mentioned, to, to go over questions and we'll talk about what you might have on your mind. Now, before we get started, we're going to ask you a quick poll question to get a feel for what your biggest barrier is to providing CO protection. David? All right, thanks, Jackie. Yeah, our first question is about the biggest barrier. So we're assuming that some of you may have a barrier to entry for some reason into the carbon monoxide market. So the question specifically is, what do you see as the biggest barrier to including CO as part of your overall offering? If you could go ahead and click the response or responses that are most applicable to your business. Maybe it's a lack of experience or knowledge. Uh, maybe there's not enough time or value to train your team on CO. Maybe you feel that detection, the CO detection technology is still unreliable. Or perhaps you have no customer interest or customers at this point aren't willing to pay for carbon monoxide detection. If you could go ahead and vote, uh, I'd like to leave the poll open for another few seconds. Go ahead and click the response or responses that are most applicable to you or your business. And uh, we'll give you just a few more seconds. We see about a half of you have voted. Uh, we do appreciate that. So I'm going to go ahead and close the polls here. And uh, I still see some votes trickling in. All right, so we're going to close the polls. And because we do have a, a sizable audience with us today, I want to just share these results back with you. It uh, looks pretty evenly split between either a lack of knowledge or experience and at the present time no customer interest or demand. And through this webinar, we uh, do plan to address both of those uh, situations. So thank you for sharing that. I'll take the results down now and go back to Jackie. All right, thank you. So let's start off with the basics. What is carbon monoxide? Carbon monoxide, or CO, as it's also referred to, it's an odorless, tasteless, invisible, and highly toxic gas, and it, it results from the incomplete combustion of fossil fuels. So the CO molecule is made up of one carbon atom and one oxygen atom, and it has a density that's really similar to air. And we're, we're often asked, and we were asked from some of you on the line, if CO rises to the ceiling or if it actually stays closer to the ground, and that's usually in conjunction with questions that you're asking about where they should be installed. So I want to clear that up and right away as, as we're starting to talk about this. And when CO is produced, initially it rises due to the heat of combustion, but as it cools, it actually circulates in the same manner as the ambient air. So CO actually really, it really spreads pretty evenly throughout a room. So why is carbon monoxide so dangerous? Carbon monoxide, as I just mentioned, is really highly toxic to people, especially when it's um, present in high volumes or if it's present over long periods of exposure. And you can't see CO, you can't smell it, you can't taste it, so it's virtually impossible to detect it without a sensing technology. That's also why you're, you'll often hear it referred to as the silent killer. Now, our customers are usually surprised by the fact that carbon monoxide deaths and poisonings are really an issue across the country. This is not just a problem in some states. And because the CO is produced from sources that are really common, and, and they're going to be present in really nearly any commercial building or home anywhere across the country. So uh, we'll talk about that in just a minute. But I also want to make sure to point out at the bottom of this slide where it references the Journal of the American Medical Association. According to the Journal of the American Medical Association, carbon monoxide is the number one cause of poisoning deaths in the United States right now. It's actually causing about 2,100 deaths per year. All right, so the common sources of CO. As, as you can see on this slide, it's produced from really common appliances, heating systems, power tools, fireplaces, vehicles. And when these things aren't working properly or they're not ventilated properly, CO actually will build up and it's going to become really dangerous because 
um, while these, these producing appliances are so common, people really don't realize that they can be dangerous. And sadly, the poisonings are happening on a daily basis. There is also definitely a misconception that they really only happen in the northern states. And Jack's going to talk in a minute about um, some instances that have happened in a couple of areas with that throughout the country. But this is absolutely equally as um, big a problem in the southern states, too. So now let's talk for a second about how CO affects the human body. The top half of the slide, it depicts the normal process of respiration and, circu and circulation. So the, the little blue dots that you see there, those are oxygen molecules, or they represent the oxygen molecules. And you, you can see how they're attaching to the hemoglobin spheres. Oxygen molecules enter the lungs and they're transported to the cells throughout the body by attaching to the hemoglobin that's in your blood. And the lower half of this slide shows what happens when carbon monoxide is present. So there you'll see that the CO molecules attach to the hemoglobin far more readily than the oxygen does. So when there's a, an excessive level of CO present in the environment, it actually prevents the oxygen from being able to attach to the hemoglobin. So that means that less oxygen is going to be able to be transported throughout your body. Now, the effects of CO are always measured in both concentration and time. So um, CO poisoning can result from being exposed to low levels of CO over a long period of time, as well as high concentrations over a short period of time. You might have heard the term PPM in CO dis discussions, and that's what's referenced on the top left of the screen. PPM stands for parts per million. That's how CO is measured. So this table shows you the different levels of injury and sickness that, that can occur, depending on the length and exposure of CO. So, for example, if you look where it says the level of 800 parts per million or PPM, when you have 800 parts per million present for 45 minutes, a person's going to experience flu-like symptoms, headache, nausea, dizziness. And if they continue to be exposed for two hours, they may also become unconscious and collapse. OK, so now that you're armed with the basics of carbon monoxide, we're going to take another quick poll. David? All right. Thank you, Jackie. So some of you indicated that you are actively involved with carbon monoxide. Uh, others uh, need more training, or others don't have uh, maybe customer demand or interest. Um, in what types of applications, when you do install CO or when you do see CO uh, detectors uh, available to be sold, in what types of applications are you typically installing CO detectors? Could that be the single family or multifamily homes, maybe sleeping space situations? hotels, lodging, dormitories, et cetera. Maybe it's some types of commercial space, like an office or educational facility, healthcare facilities specifically, or other. If you could go ahead and vote, uh, use this the, the on-screen voting uh, option there for you. Uh, about 75% of you have voted. Let's, let's see if we can get that to 80, if possible. Go ahead and cast your vote, and we'll share those results back with you. All right, we're just over 80 percent of the attendees here, 85. Very good. Thank you. Go ahead and close the polls. And then just because we do have a, a nice uh, size crowd here uh, with us today, it looks like uh, single family homes and multifamily homes. 96 percent of you are involved with that. Uh, and then the second largest category was that commercial, so office, education, retail, <laughs> et cetera. Take those results down, and we'll go back to you, Jack. Jackie. <laughs> OK. Thanks. Actually, I'm going to hand it over to Jack very quickly so he can start talking about some case studies that have happened recently. Thanks a lot, Jackie. Uh, so first, I want to talk a little bit about a case study that demonstrates the incredible importance of CO detection. Marion Zay Elementary School is in North Laurel, Massachusetts. In October of 2008, a few hours into an average school day, the CO detector alarm sounded in the school's cafeteria area. So school officials reacted instantly to this alarm by calling the local fire department, which directed them to pull the fire alarms and evacuate more than 300 students and staff from the building. Fire crews did arrive on the scene, and they came in with gas meters. They walked towards the cafeteria. The meters originally read 15 parts per million, then 30 parts per million. And as the crews reached the boiler room near the cafeteria prep area, the meters read 100 ppm which is a dangerous level over a certain period of time. The North Borough Fire Chief actually said, the kids would have been brought into this area for lunch. With CO being a silent, odorless killer, we had the potential for a mass casualty incident because of long-term exposure to CO. So luckily, because everyone was evacuated, there were no injuries. 
and the CO leak was caused by the school's gas power heating boiler. It wasn't ventilating properly. As a result of this alarm, the boiler was turned off, the school was ventilated, and the students and staff were all able to come back into school by lunchtime. So a very successful story. Now, next I'd like to talk a little bit about CO legislation. As public awareness grows, new local, state, and national legislation for CO detection is being adopted. Unfortunately, what often is the case is that a CO tragedy drives this legislation. For example, recent CO poisoning tragedies in Colorado were the reason for passing CO legislation in that state. Uh, in November of 2008, the Lofgren family went to sleep while vacationing in a Colorado home. Unknown to them, a faulty pipe in the crawl space began leaking CO when the home's snowmelt system had kicked on. Now, the home did not have any CO detectors installed, nor were they required at the time. This ended in a very tragic situation for this family. This incident, though, was one of the main drivers behind Colorado CO legislation. Colorado passed this legislation, signed it into law on March 24th of 2009. Like Colorado, many other states are taking legislative action to avert their future CO tragedies like the one we just went over. In fact, if we look at this map, a majority of the states in the country now have CO detection laws and more are, being, are even considering legislation. If you're wondering about CO legislation in your state, System Sensor, System Sensor actually keeps an ongoing tally on our website. Go to systemsensor.com uh, backslash CO map and you can see what kind of legislation is happening around the country. One thing that all this new legislation means for you is that CO detection is a growing market with a built-in customer base. And several of these states, uh, several of these laws are relatively new. In 2008, five states became affected with CO legislation. In 2009, five more became effective. In 2010, this year, we have three new states that are uh, requiring CO detection. And in 2011, there's already one that will become effective next year. And we can see by the map, California and Ohio are in yellow. That means they have pending legislation. So now let's talk about why you should offer CO protection. As we just discussed, customers across the country are now required by law to have CO protection. So we want you to capitalize on this expanding market. You can win jobs over your competition. By including CO detection, you're able to differentiate yourself from your competition, increase your commission and your RMR, build longer-term relationships. You know, isn't this another big reason to offer CO detection? Did you know that customers with CO and fire protection monitoring are actually less likely to cancel the security monitoring service? So adding CO protection is your chance to extend your recurring monthly revenue. Gain referrals. Now, think about it. Many customers either don't know about CO or they think retail detectors are their only option. When you offer CO protection to your customers, you're going to tell people, they're going to tell people and sell the benefits of monitored protection for you. And then guess what? Their contacts are going to want you to come and sell them too. So how do we go about selling CO detection to our customers? Now, I'm sure making money is important, it is for all of us, but let's think beyond the money for a minute. CO protection actually saves lives. There's no question about it. There are stories in the media about it every day. In fact, if you'd like to read some, again, go and visit our website. We have systemsensor.com backslash CO, and you can see a lot of stories in the media about CO detection. What better way to make money than to know you can be saving lives in the process? Now, more and more states are requiring CO detection, your customers are going to get CO protection somewhere, so take advantage. You should be their provider. The system connection, not an option for real retail detectors. System connection is especially important with CO poisoning because symptoms include everything from flu-like symptoms to being unable to wake up and leave. So you can offer the solution. System connection, uh, system connected CO detectors they allow the appropriate authorities to be notified when CO is present. And remember, you can't see, smell, or taste CO. So people often don't even realize CO poisoning is happening. So this monitoring is absolutely necessary. Now, we all know that CO detectors have limited lives. 
System CO detectors were installed around 2003. So we've already had detectors expire in the market, and we know that more are expiring this year. So go to your customers, see if they have CO detectors that need replacing, especially if your company installed CO detectors five to six years ago. Now, for CO detector placement, as always, installers should follow the manufacturer's specific instructions when you're placing and installing CO detectors. Generally, when you're wall mounting a system connected CO detector, place it at least as high as the light switch and at least six inches from the ceiling. The detector should not be mounted near the floor. As noted earlier, CO gas typically rises from the point of production and then mixes evenly throughout the air. Higher placement protects the detector from potential damage caused by pets and even tampering by small children. If you're ceiling mounting a system connected CO detector, just locate it at least 12 inches from any wall. Now NFPA 720 is the authority on CO detector installation where you should place them throughout a building. And section 55531 of NFPA 720 um, we have guide, uh, guidance for commercial type installations. So according to this section, carbon monoxide detectors should be installed in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions and make sure you install them on the ceiling in the same room as permanently installed fuel burning appliances, such as the bottom right corner furnace room. Also, install them centrally located on every habitable level and in every HVAC zone of the building. Now, for residential type applications, NFPA 720 has section 9411. This provides guidance for residential type installations. Remember, don't install CO detectors in any environment that doesn't comply with the detector's uh, environmental specifications. And as always, follow the manufacturer's instructions. Now, according to this section of NFPA 720, you need to install CO detectors outside each sleeping area in the immediate vicinity of the bedrooms. Also, install CO detectors on every level of a dwelling unit, including basements. And don't, uh, don't forget in any other locations where required by applicable laws, codes, or standards for that area. So, with that, I'll turn it over to David, who has another poll question for us. All right. Thanks, Jack. I do have a poll question. So we've learned a little bit about uh, carbon monoxide detectors and placement. Some of you have indicated that you are actively installing carbon monoxide detectors. Others are looking for more information or maybe waiting for their codes to change. So the next question, though, is how many CO detectors are you typically installing per project that includes CO detection? So if you could go ahead and respond uh, zero, perhaps you're not involved uh, in any CO installations, uh, one, two, three, four, five, or six or more if you're maybe involved in larger projects. I'll leave the polls open for a few more seconds, uh, allow you to get your vote in, and then you can see how, how you might compare to the other first alert uh, dealers that are on this line as well. All right, we have 90% of you voted. I'm going to go ahead and close the poll and then share these results back with you. A smaller percentage are not in installing CO in any way. It looks like 58% are one, and then the balance are two to three. I uh, would like to remind you, you can post questions using the uh, question icon on the GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, Jack and Jackie, we do have a number of questions that have been posted. Would you uh, entertain a few of those at this time? Sure, absolutely. Okay. First question comes in. Uh, they've heard we're working on a different configuration, round versus square, uh, with a carbon monoxide detector. And if that's true, uh, can you verify that and when that might be available? Uh, wow, you know, that's great that they're already hearing about it. But yes, that actually is true. The rumors are flying. Um, we, we are working on a round version of the CO detector, and it should be available before the end of the year. And will that be for wall and ceiling or primarily ceiling? It's for wall and ceiling. It can All be right. installed on either. Good. Next question I think I can answer uh, if you'll let me. Uh, they're asking for a copy of this uh, presentation. And I'll just remind you what Ross might have said in the introduction, that the webinar will be posted at systemsensor.com forward slash FAP 
uh, for first alert professionals, and we should have that up within 48 to 72 hours. Um, next question is, what needs to be taken into consideration when specifying per level, and what is the square footage that this detector may cover? Well, we get this question a lot regarding square footage, and the answer is that uh, the industry has not come up with a specific square footage coverage for CO detection because it's still fairly young, but we're very confident that the industry will have uh, square footage coverage for us in the near future. For now, we just have to be aware that, you know, in any area that uh, people will be leave, living or dwelling or sleeping, we need to just be aware that CO detection is important for any given area that they may be uh, living in a house. Okay. So that one per level jack may apply to maybe normal size residences, but we may want to use one outside each sleeping sleeping space uh, in larger residences or multifamilies? Yeah, actually NFPA 720 does call for having a, a carbon monoxide detector not just on each level but outside of the sleeping area. So if you have a larger home and you, um, you know, the sleeping areas, the bedrooms are on opposite sides, yeah, you would certainly require more than one carbon monoxide detector on that floor. Okay. Uh, next question deals with lifespan. Um, they have a number of customers that have currently installed CO detectors. How can they tell what the lifespan uh, might be left or remaining on a carbon monoxide detector? Okay. Well, um, in, a, in a few minutes we're going to cover system sensor CO 1224T hardwire detector and the Honeywell Security 5800 CO. Now, there are a couple of ways that you'll know if the detector is reaching end of life. Um, first, if you actually take the unit off the wall on the back of the detector, there's a little sticker that says replace by, there's a replace by date. But we recognize the fact that customers are very unlikely to be taking units off the wall. Um, and one of the key selling points of the CO 1224T with real test, the hardwire detector by System Sensor, is that um, it's equipped with an end of life notification feature that we'll touch on in a minute where the notification that the detector has reached end of life is actually going to go to the panel so then the central station is notified and you'll be able to proactively go out and replace detectors. Okay, very good. Uh, next question has to do with legislation and are we aware if legislation is requiring detectors to be installed in existing facilities or only new construction or will that vary by state? It can vary by state and we actually keep a tally of all the uh, individual you know, legislation by state, by area. So, um, like I mentioned before, we actually keep it on our website. So, um, if we can direct, if you go to our website, go to our legislation map, click on the state that you, you know, have interest in, and then you can see exactly where the CO detectors are required. So, if you go to www, just to say it again, dot systemsensor.com forward slash CO, that's where we have all of our CO information. Very good. Uh, next question is more of a general question. Uh, the attendee is saying, I know what the rules are in my area, but how are um, units being dispatched across the country? Is there any consistency? Um, and then who's being called? Is it the fire guys? Is it medical? Is it some uh, other emergency service like police in the event of a CO warning? Well, it sounds like the question is, when the central station hears of a CO uh, occurrence or, or, or alarm, who do they call and who comes? Um, so if that's the question being asked, it, you know, it really varies. I've, I've heard different stories. Um, different central station monitoring uh, stations will, you know, choose who and how to call. Um, the most common one that I've heard is that they will first call the home itself, and then if no one answers and they think there may be danger, then they will call the fire department. I haven't heard of the police being called, but I'm not saying it's out of the question. All right. And there's just to let everyone know, uh, there is a standard that was written by CSAA, the Central Station Alarm Association, uh, which gives a simple um, few-step process on how Central Station should react to a CO alarm. So we would encourage people to look that up. And of course, we can help if they have uh, if they need help looking it up. Very good. That's the questions we have posted at this time. Why don't we go back to the presentation? Okay, sounds good. 
All right, so now that you've heard about how the market's growing and how legislation's growing, your next question is likely, so what, detector, what CO detector should I choose? Now, the system sensor CO1224T with real test that I just briefly touched on is by far your best hardwire detector, op detector option. And that's because this detector is going to provide you with the most protection for your customers, and it also definitely has the best benefits for you. So let's talk about why. Now, you might have heard that the new NFPA standard came out, NFPA 720-2009. And, and that's what Jack was referencing when he was talking about the installation requirements. NFPA 720-2009 is a complete rewrite of the CO detection standard, and it now requires the ability to be able to functionally test carbon monoxide detectors by the year 2012. So what that means is you, you need to be able to take a can of carbon monoxide, spray it into the detector, and make sure that it's actually sensing CO, not just that it's appropriately powered. Well, the good news is that you don't have to wait until 2012 because system sensor is ready now. This detector is the first true functional CO test that's available on the market. Provide 24-hour protection. The CO1224T is a system-connected detector, so it's going to protect your customers even if they can't respond to the local CO detection alarm. And again, this is a huge advantage over retail detectors. The CO1224T enables proactive service calls. So here's the deal. All carbon monoxide detectors have a limited lifespan. The CO1224T detector is equipped with a six-year end-of-life notification feature. So as I mentioned earlier, unlike the other CO detectors on the market, the CO1224T is going to alert the central station at the end of the detector's lifespan. So guess what? That means you can take advantage of it. You can go out and proactively meet your customer needs and replace those, those old age detectors that have reached their end of life. And also, uh, Jack briefly touched on earlier that system-connected detectors started to come on the market in 2003. So there are, I, want, I just want to make sure that you catch the point that there are already detectors on the market that have been installed that need to be replaced. So please keep that in mind, too. Provide extra protection with minimal added cost. What I mean by this is the CO1224T has a current draw of 20 milliamps in standby and 40 in alarm, which is the lowest on the market today. So that means that you're going to be able to uh, put more CO detectors on the fire or security panel without having to purchase a more expensive or an expensive panel or auxiliary power supplies. Speed and simplify installation. You can, you can mount the CO1224T to a single gang electrical box or you can surface mount it to the wall or the ceiling or I guess I should say and, you can mount it to the wall or the ceiling. Uh, this detector is really easy to install, which means you can save time and money. And not only is it easy to install, but the CO1224T is an electrochemical detector, which means it's able to take the, the most accurate readings of carbon monoxide concentrations. And we talked about earlier how CO is measured in both concentration and time. So this detector is going to take uh, measurements of low levels of CO that can be hazardous over a long period of time, as well as high concentrations that pose an immediate danger. Now, we recognize that you also come across installations where you may prefer to install a wireless carbon monoxide detector. And for those instances, Honeywell Security also offers a great carbon monoxide detector that has the ability to send alarm, end of life, low battery, and tamper messages to the receiver by zone. So what that means is, that when you install the wireless CO detector, the 5800CO, you're giving it a specific zone on the panel. So when a detector that you install is an alarm or if it needs to be serviced, the panel's going to tell you exactly which zone it's on so you know exactly which detector has the issue. The 5800CO is a wireless carbon monoxide detector, as I mentioned. So for those of you that regularly do wireless installations, this is definitely the, the solution for you, but it can also be the solution for you that prefer to wire because, um, as we've heard from many customers, there are, there are definitely instances where it's either really hard to wire or it's impossible to wire a carbon monoxide detector. So please keep the 5800CO in mind for that. And then like the CO1224T, the 5800CO is also a system-connected detector. And I cannot stress enough how beneficial it is to have monitored carbon, carbon monoxide detection. And I know, especially for, for those of you on the phone, since you're First Alert Professional dealers, I, I know that one of the key messages of the First Alert Professional program is that you strive to be experts in life safety. And this is a huge, huge selling point for your customers because you can't see CO, you can't smell it, you can't taste it, and symptoms of CO poisoning, they really do cause the home or the building owner 
to physically be unable to leave the building. So if you're monitored, if you have monitored CO detection, you can offer the protection that the retail detectors can't if the home or building occupant is unable to leave. And then lastly, we want to point out that the 5800 CO is UL 2075 listed. So in summary, here are some key points that we want to make sure that you walk away with today. First, CO is a deadly gas that can only be detected using CO detection technology. Second, legislation is expanding across the CO market, and as Jack pointed out when he had the map up, there are actually more states with CO uh, legislation right now than there are that do not, and there are also states that are still pending legislation, so we know that it's going to continue to grow. System-connected CO solutions provide the most comprehensive protection available. The hardwired CO1224T carbon monoxide detector is the only system-connected detector on the market with real tests the first true field functional CO test. And the 5800 CO wireless CO detector from Honeywell Security offers signaling by zone and fast installation. Now we hope that you learned a lot on the webinar today, but by all means we want to make sure that you continue to learn about carbon monoxide. So uh, please use the resources that I have up on the slide right now. For all system sensor CO resources, and we mentioned this a couple times today, but just to make sure that you have it accurately, uh, please go to www.systemsensor.com forward slash CO. For system sensor online training, webinars, and seminar information, please go to www.systemsensor.com forward slash training. And remember to check out archived webinars on um, CO detection. We have one available on codes and updates right now, so you can get more information about the, the current codes. Go to systemsensor.com forward slash webinars. And then lastly, um, if you'd like to review this webinar, it will be available at systemsensor.com forward slash FAP. Okay, so at this time we'd like to open it up to any questions that you may have. David, have any more been submitted? We, we sure do. We have uh, quite a few more. So thank you for that. And just a reminder to all attendees, if you do have a question, go ahead and type it in using the question icon on the GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, the question is, is more open-ended here, and I think he's looking for feedback from us, but also from maybe fellow uh, attendees. Um, any guidance you can give me on what companies are charging for adding CO to the system? Uh, and he makes, he makes a comment, uh, we included in our basic package, which I'm thinking is a mistake, is his quote. Any idea, Jack or Jackie, what people might be charging, uh, you know, on top of a basic package for including CO? Well, we've heard that, you know, some companies charge, you know, a few dollars more for, for to add CO monitoring, but, you know, we don't know for sure. It's, yeah, it's been, it's been varied, what I have heard at um, the conferences you know, from a few dollars, you know, here and there. But what we could maybe do to help answer this question, because I think everybody else is muted, right, David? Yes, yes. sure. All right. So um, for the other first alert professional dealers that are on the line, if you wouldn't mind emailing, our contact information is, is on the slide that's in front of you right now. If you wouldn't mind emailing maybe what you're charging for carbon monoxide right now, we'd be happy to get that back to the person that answered the question. Or even as we're asking, answering questions here, if you want to use that same question icon and say we're, you know, we're charging an extra X dollars, uh, we oh, that's report, that back, report that back in, in real time here. Um, so thank you for that. Okay, uh, basic, the next question is uh, who should I buy from? I can buy, I can buy carbon monoxide detectors through Honeywell or I can buy them through uh, purchase system sensor products through security distribution. Um, who should I buy from is their question. Um, at, well, as you just indicated in that question, you can buy the CO1224T, the system sensor detector, through security distribution. And unfortunately, we're, we can't recommend one distributor over another. <laughs> okay. All right. Very good. Uh, we are giving some feedback on the monitoring questions, so go ahead and continue to submit those questions or those comments back, and we'll see. We'll just report those out in, in as close to real time as we can. Um, the question here is about the carbon monoxide detector, whether it's the whether it's the CO twelve twenty four T or the wireless, and it's the CO sensor. Can it be replaced, or does the whole unit need to be replaced? Uh, the whole unit needs to be replaced. 
The uh, both detectors have uh, a long life of about six years, and you know when that life is over, like Jackie went over, um, you know you'll get a trouble signal, and you'll know it's time to replace that detector. Okay, so it's maybe it's a an op also an opportunity to get back in the household or the the business um, to see what else they might need. Absolutely, it's a great opportunity to go back into your customers and see what else they might need. Yep. A question I don't know that we've been asked before, but what's the recommended maintenance for this detector? Well, you have to test it um, right after installation, mm -hmm. and then NFPA recommends uh, annually afterwards. Okay. All right. And in terms of maintenance, is it could it be comparable to to uh, you know vacuuming, similar to what we make recommendations with smoke detectors, or is it different? Well, it's different. Um, you know, the very basic test to do on the CO detector is the, uh, the test button, and that'll test the circuitry and make sure that the cell is working and, and uh, everything's looking fine inside. And then, of course, the CO1224T has an added test feature called Real Test that Jackie went over, which allows you to spray actual CO gas into the, into the CO chamber, um, and then that'll tell you that it is actually sensing CO gas. And we'd encourage you to do both annually. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, next question is about a cost comparison between the, the system connected uh, CO twelve twenty four T and the system connected wireless. Would we know that, or should they refer back to Honeywell or yeah. distribution? Yeah. To be honest with you, um, we we sell to the distributor, but we don't really have any control over how they price the detectors. So I'm, I'm not. I couldn't even answer that question. You would have to go to the distributor to ask. Okay. Question specific to to the CO detector: um, Is the relay relay output on the CO detector for its end of life a dry contact only? Okay, so um, the end of life notification is the trouble relay, and it's a dry contact. So what that means is it's a mechanical switch that's electronically or electrically operated, and it's normally held shut. But when there's a trouble condition, when it's reached end of life, it opens up. So. All right, very good. Uh, when the detector does reach its end of life, does it create an alarm, an audible alarm, a trouble signal, a supervisory, or a supervisory signal to the central station? There's, uh, there's no local alarm on the CO1224T. It, it is, uh, end of life notification is done with the trouble relay, so it's going to notify the panel, which will then notify the central station. Okay, all right. Uh, next question has to do with the LED displays on some uh, retail CO detectors. Is there an advantage to that aside from the, the c uh, consumer walking by and seeing it says zero uh, relative to uh, the detectors that we featured today? No, we, we don't see an advantage. We, you know, our detectors uh, work just as well as any other detectors. If not, they're more accurate. Um, so when we first, you know, there really should be no advantage to having an LED screen versus not having one. Okay. All right. We are getting some good feedback on what you might charge or not charge uh, for including CO in uh, your monthly reoccurring uh, monitoring fees. Um, it seems to be a range. Uh, $2 is reported. Uh, no extra charge. Uh, to include a CO detector, I, I have a one-time charge of $125 but monitoring is included in my basic package. Um, that was actually reported uh, in two situations here. Let's see. Uh, 145 installed, no extra monthly monitoring charge. So thank you for that feedback. If you have a, anything other than that, we would appreciate hearing about it, so maybe we can help some of your peers in other parts of the country. Um, the question here is, uh, the next question is, does it all need to be UL supervised? What, uh, I'm not sure yeah. what, but what that means. Our detectors are UL listed. Um, I'm not sure if they're asking about wiring supervision, maybe. Okay, uh, and we're that, not sure what it all means. So you know, perhaps maybe get a, it, more details in the question. Yeah. So if the person that asked that question about UL supervised wants to uh, maybe rephrase it, so we might have a clear understanding about what you're asking, that'd be great. Um, the next question is, I've been to your website. Uh, it does a nice job of explaining about carbon monoxide. Is there a end user piece that we can use as a giveaway to our customers? 
Uh, actually, I, and I think it is posted. We do have one that has the benefits of, um, that does have the benefits of carbon monoxide on there. If, if there's not something out on the website that meets your needs, We'd love to hear from you. Uh, our email addresses are on, on the screen right now, so please write it down, and we'd be happy to work with you. Okay, very good. Maybe in the next question I'll flip over to the website, and we can give them the exact link here. Um, next question is start, uh, talks about the end of life. When does it start? At the time of manufacturing, first power-up, or some other time? That's, that's a good question. That's actually something that came up at the First Alert Professionals Conference in San Diego as well at the CEO breakout. Um, our, our installation instructions indicate that uh, from the date of manufacture, that it's six years from the date of manufacture, but in actuality it's, it's from when it's powered up. Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to read here and, and to put it in the form of a question. Uh, as the sensor is used, does it sense CO less? So I guess they're asking about uh, as it approaches that end of life, is it also losing uh, some of its sensitivity? Um, the, the answer is yes, because uh, the CO cell, you know, loses sensitivity over time. That's why it has a limited lifespan. But, but our lifespan, like we said, is six years. Within that six years, it's not... You know, it's not uh, uh, degraded as far as being a CO detector. You know, through six years, it is just as good up until that six year being a CO detector as it was when you first installed it. Mm -hmm. so the, the sensitivity is appropriate to read the parts per million um, as necessary by UL. So it stays within It'll the work. min and max range that's needed. Uh, for the CO detector. Okay. Uh, the the, uh, the follow-up question on the UL... Um, UL question that we had earlier is, would the wireless receiver also need to be UL? Well, they, uh, meaning the panel? So they are UL listed. So, well, there's a receiver connected between the panel and, and the detector itself. Okay. And um, I, I, we always recommend UL installation, so, and I'm pretty sure Honeywell Security does too. Yeah. Um, if there's, you know, maybe a more specific model number that we need to look at, then um, we would encourage them to get a hold of us and we can help get the right person at Honeywell Security. Okay. All right. Uh, next question is more asking for clarification. Um, they're, they're suggesting that our replace by decal uh, would not be the exact date if, it's, if the timer starts from power-up, and he wants you to address the difference of if it sits on our shelf for a few weeks and sits, sits on a distributor's shelf, shelf for a few weeks, um, how we might manage that difference? Well, yes, the, the, the decal or the sticker on, on the product is the true replace by date. And like Jackie said, we, we can't expect everyone to, to look at that. So um, there may be a difference between that and the, uh, the trouble relay, which is only started when it's powered. So. I guess I'm just rephrasing that to make sure we got the question right. Um, so, you know, system sensor, the way we build the product and the way we sell it to our distributors, um, between us, we're always trying to manage that time in between the two to make sure it's as short as possible. Um, so far, we have heard no issues with the way, with uh, the time in between that, so that we know people are getting very fresh, very good detectors. Okay. Um, let's see here. The question uh, is about panel compatibility. Um, is is this uh, uh, CO 1224T uh, compatible with uh, other Honeywell branded uh, panels as well as the Honeywell security panels? You know, it's considered a four-wire product, so there's no uh, UL compatibility needed between it and the panel. So as long as the, uh, the panel has a four-wire type zone, then we're good. So not the protocols similar to smoke detectors. I think he's mean referencing two-wire compatibility, probably. So yeah, no, j right. which is what, Jack, yeah. Just, okay, yeah. all right, very good. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, the question here is, uh, hit, it's this installer's best practice to put a CO detector in each bedroom, um, and I think we stated that NFPA 
uh, says outside of each bedroom. Do we want to comment on that, inside, outside? More security in one case, I guess, or more, uh, more um, CO detection uh, capability? I can tell you that we're cons our, our installation instructions are consistent with that of NFPA 720, saying outside of the bedroom. However, um, I, it certainly is not a bad idea to put it inside a bedroom either. In fact, I have them inside at my own home. Yeah, it, it, it gives you that added level, level of security. And like Jackie said before, if you have a, a pertaining to another question, if you have a really big house where bedrooms are really spread out, then it's a much better idea to put them inside instead of just one outside. Okay. Uh, next one has to do with uh, how these detectors might be wired. Can they put multiple detectors, multiple uh, CO detectors on one circuit? And then his follow-up question is, if one reaches the end of life, do all reach end of life? Uh, let's see, reaches end of life, any of the detectors beyond will not activate an alarm until the unit is replaced. So looks like uh, first question is multiple CO detectors on one circuit. And then if one reaches an end of life, does it affect the others? Yes, you can put multiple on one circuit. Mm -hmm. And when one reaches end of life, um, the others can still go into alarm. They will still be operational, okay. even if one goes into end of life. All right. OK, good. Um, next one is looking for clarification on, on what is the code for proper placement, maybe the what NFPA 720 or something more specific. And he's specifically looking at the number of detectors required and where. Maybe you okay. want to cover that again? Sure. Uh, actually, do you want to flip back to those slides, Jack? And, yeah, sure. And we can, if, sorry, there's a little delay, but we'll get there as quickly <laughs> as we can. <laughs> Okay, so here for commercial applications, NFPA 720 recommends on the ceiling in the same room as permanently installed fuel burning appliances and centrally located, I'm tongue tied here, on every habitable level and in every HVAC zone of the building. For residential applications, uh, outside each dwelling unit sleeping area in the immediate vicinity of the bedrooms on every level of a, of a dwelling unit, including basements, and other locations as uh, required by applicable laws for, or codes or standards in your particular area. And then, again, it goes further to say that each alarm or detector, detector shall be located on the wall, ceiling, or other location as specified in the manufacturer's published instructions. Yeah. And so ours can be on the wall or ceiling. And if for some reason there's another, you know, question outside of that that we didn't answer, we hope you get a hold of us so we can talk about it. All right, very good. Uh, next question is, are these uh, either, de either of these detectors addressable? And if not, are there any plans to make an addressable CO detector? Well, the, the CO1224T is not addressable. Uh, it's conventional. The 5800 CO uh, we consider addressable because it, it, it has its own zone on the control panel when installed. Um, so you'll know exactly which zone or, or address, if you will, um, you know, the detector is if it goes into alarm or trouble. That's very good. Uh, we do have one or two questions left, so if any of, any of the attendees with us today uh, do have any questions, now would be the time to ask them uh, before, we, uh, before we go to wrap up. Uh, next question is, do I need to install an end-of-line power supervision relay at each CO detector, or is it built into the unit? No, no, you don't have to install an extra one. It's built in. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, would the CO detector be added to the fire smoke zone and therefore be always open or wired separately? It would be wired separately. In fact, uh, this is for NFPA 720. It says that the CO alarm and the smoke alarm have to be enunciated separately, so CO detectors really should not go in a smoke zone. Okay. All right. Just two questions left. Uh, so if you do have any other questions, please post them at this time. Um, when you say system connected, is it a 24 volt or 12 volt? 24 volt fire alarm system or 12 volt security system? It could be either. It, uh, the CO 1224 t works with both 12 and 24 volt uh, security slash fire panel. Okay. All right. And the last question we have is uh, must be from one of our Canadian friends. Uh, does this have approvals in Canada, and if so, which ones? 
There, um, there is actually another hardwired detector in Canada, actually both wireless and hardwired, that um, they're different model numbers. But yes, there, there are detectors available, these same detectors in the Canadian market. They're just, they are different model numbers, and they have ULC listings. So we'd recommend that you contact your local distributor in Canada. Okay. All right. So I think that's all the questions that we have at this point, and I think we'll turn it over to Ross. Hey, thanks, guys. That was very informative. Uh, and I want to thank all you guys from uh, First Alert Professional for taking the time to join us today. Uh, as a follow-up, we'll be sending you a brief survey in about an hour, and we'd really appreciate you guys filling that out. That helps us um, helps us know uh, have your feedback. Um, everyone who completes the survey will receive one free system sensor CO twelve twenty four T carbon monoxide detector. So uh, please, if you take the time, you will be rewarded, and we appreciate that. In addition, we will reward one of you who complete the survey with a fifty dollar Target gift card. Um, and if you have any uh, uh, more questions or need any more information about the CO1224T, uh, general carbon monoxide related questions, or any of our other products, training, or tools, uh, please visit us at System Sensor.